and we're live. We wanted to finish part two of no matter how high you get, you still be looking up to him. Now, this particular featured segment is to speak to those who are climbing high up on the ladder, blowing up bigger than life itself. That is the real reason when we should humble ourselves when we start blowing up. Because no matter how high we get, we still have to look up to the Creator. And the more responsibility is given, where much is given, much is required of us. So no matter how high we get up there on that totem pole, we'll still be looking up to the Creator. And a lot of us get a lot of favor, and we get promoted, and we get advanced, and we think that is a cause for us to not to have to look up to God or to bow down to something greater than ourselves. And it's very vital in the day's time that we really look up to God and we thank God and be grateful. Those of us who are blowing up and advancing ourselves, we are the ones that are supposed to be the humblest. The more grace that is given to you, the more humble and gratitude you're supposed to show. But we're finding people that have outsourced God as if God is no longer needed in their life and they climb up the ladder and they think it's them. Well, it's not about you, Buster, and it's not about you, sister, because no matter how high you climb up on that totem pole, you're still going to be looking up to somebody greater than yourself. I don't care who it is. You can call it uh, some outside force if you want to. You can call it the universal force. You can call it the laws of attraction. You can call it whatever you want to, but you're beholden to someone greater than yourself. We have a debt to pay. We kneel down at God's side, or we kneel down at his assistant side, or Romola is what the African traditional people teach. We kneel down at Romola's side and ask to come here. And we said we had a mission and that we had something that only we could complete. So we went into contract with Oromala and Oromala took down the contract and only Oromala knows because we whispered in to his ear and we went into that contract with Oromala. But that meant that if we should get advancement, only God can give you promotions. If you should move up the ladder, only God can promote you. Promotion only comes through God. It does not come through man. So matter, no matter how high we get up there on the totem pole, even to the glass ceiling, we will still be looking up to the creator. No matter how high, how high you get. And you know what? I'm going to take a moment here, okay? Because sometimes we do a whole theatrical show and we have to include things in to this theatrical show. We have to include important things and we're going to include those important things today. Uh oh, we got, got a little mess here. <laughs> Get our glasses because I do need those. Glasses here. And we'll be right back at you. Hold tight, family. Hold tight. Okay, I think we got everything going here now. 
Yes, okay. Now we are rolling. All right. See if it's a lot brighter in here without all that light. Okay. Maybe I'll. All right. Now, as I was saying earlier, you know, sometimes we can forget where our glory comes from, and sometimes we can forget, you know, where our actual um, blessings come from. Unless we forget where our blessings come from, you know, it can really throw us for a loop when we sometimes think it's us. It's not us. We do cooperate with the God and co-create together, but it's not us alone. We can't do it in our own strength. And the sooner we find that out, we're co-creators with God, the better. And if you get so high up on that ladder and then you think it was you who physically got you there, you tend to forget to look up to God and give God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor and to magnify him because God will inhabit your praises. But if you forget that you took those steps on your own and you did not give God the glory for each one of those steps, you'll soon slip down off that ladder. And I'm talking to someone today because sometimes pride goes before fall. And if we are being prideful about our accomplishments and about the things that we have gained in life, material things and advancement and favor and don't stop to break to our knees. I mean, break to our knees to glorify that God who got us there. Then lest we begin to fail and to fall because we can come down as quick as we've gone up. And some of our people have gotten so beside themselves that they do unnecessary things, they take unnecessary chances, they break unnecessary laws, they violate unnecessary pretense and ordinance, thinking I am the man, I am the woman, and I don't have to answer to anyone. Everyone has to answer to someone. In order to be a leader, you must first be a servant. You must first learn how to serve. And no matter how high you get up on that ladder, you must still come down and break to your knees and prostrate yourself to give homage to that which has gotten you there. And what's going on in our society is so many of us have gotten up the ladder rather rapidly and failed to offer gratitude on our way up. Most of you who are universal teachers and thinkers and, 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 and subscribers to universal thinkers, you know what I'm talking about. They'll tell you throughout the day, have gratification. Offer up gratitude. Gratitude. And even in universal thinker songs, they put words in there like gratitude and being mindful, mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Forgetting lest not you stumble. Remembering and lest not you fail. Paying homage, being quick to give thanks. Even for the little things, lest not the universe forget to bring you all of the alchemy you need. There are those that are so grateful and are quick to break to their knees that are given abundant because of their gratefulness and their gratitude, which is what exalts them beyond others. And we don't understand this. We think that we're supposed to become boastful and proud and to say that I got myself there. It was me who pulled myself up by the bootstrap. But you're not in this alone. There is an assistance that is co-creating with you. And you're working on one accord, accord, but you're not in this alone, strictly alone. So we must get this thing right. When we do find ourselves failing after climbing the ladder, after advancing ourselves, we must look back and say, 
When was I ungrateful? When did I start getting boastful and proud? Then we can trace that back to the time that we begin to fail. Because God will not let you get so high up on that ladder that you're not able to look up to him, to give him the praise and the glory and the honor. When we break to our knees and confess our sins and begin to give God the praise and the honor, that is when the scales come off of our eyes. That is when we're from released from bondage. That is when we're freed up again to be in right standing. So when there is much sin going on, we must remember for a person to be in right standing, they must understand that it's a prideful fall that got them there. Most of us don't want to acknowledge that pride goes before fall. You can best to believe that you can see that fall coming if pride is then initiated. How do you break down pride? How do you address pride? Is pride something that you don't want others to see? Is pride something that you want to handle on your own? But as far as I know, situations that happen, that suddenly happen, nothing ever suddenly happens. There's a growth period and a period when it's gradually building up momentum. And when we see it building up momentum, then we know that it didn't happen overnight. We and that's why you have gears in a car so you can put it in reverse and turn around and detour. And that's why you have the signs that are put before the pedestrians and before the driver to give them an early indication that there is work up ahead that there is a detour up ahead, detour away from this. There is construction up ahead. There is a merging of the roads up ahead or ending of a lane. We as African-American people do not heed to those warning signs. We don't heed to those detour signs, and we keep right on going, violating every prospect to save our life. And sometimes whatever situation we get in is because we've gotten ourselves there. And it's no fault of somewhere on the outside. And that is when you hear couples talk about whose fault it was that they had to divorce and they blame it all on one person. And I tend to tell them that there's never one person involved in a divorce. There's usually two people that have gotten them there. But we have to remember when we get big on the stage and start performing, the more humbler we should get. Somebody should have grabbed our Kelly and said, look, you're getting too boastful, too prideful. Somebody who loved him, somebody who cared for him, they should have said, come here, son. I see a boastfulness in you. I see a, a, a pridefulness in you. Where is your gratification? Where is your ability to fall on your face and thank the creator that he's chosen you above all names to be great? See, where much is given, much is required, and much is required of us today, ladies and gentlemen. When we gain a status or a sense of position, it is up to us to stay humble, not boastful, not prideful, not authoritarian, and not illegal, and not someone that would bring shame 
or pain upon another because they have the status, because they're in position to usurp their authority over another one, that is the time when they should appear to be more humble. Great men humble themselves. They don't exploit themselves to make themselves look big in front of a crowd, to make themselves over make they're in control. They don't do that because they're already a great man. They don't have to put on a facade to show themselves strong by usurping their authority. Why is it there's so many cruel people in the world? Is it because they're not getting enough attention? They're not getting any recognition? So they usurp their authority over another and take advantage of innocent people. And now you got the world always pulling their gun on someone. Doesn't have to be a physical gun, but it is their position in place, in life. It is their authority that they're usurping over someone else. And then you have a prideful situation turning into a gigantic problem where now that person's not controllable and they're out of control. We've got a lot of black men like that today that keep finding themselves in trouble because they haven't gone to God and looked at the bigger picture and say, it is up to me to deposit something in this world because I took an oath and I promised that I would make the world a better place than what I found it and I would deposit something positive and leave a bit of my legacy here. But you find young men now that are perishing and they have been given only short amount of time to live. And the most thing they regret is that they didn't have a chance to fulfill all the things that they want to do. And they think that the cards that have been dealt to them are cards that have been dealt to someone that somebody else should have got those cards and not them, that they didn't deserve it. But we never know when the time is near. We never know when the time is ending. That's, what we, that's why we must always be redeeming the time because the time is near. And that is to be the best person we can be in honoring God in all that we do, giving God, he, she, or it, the credit for everything that we've endeavored to do because it was God that has gotten us there. And I tell you for a fact, if you are experiencing pride, you need to lose it. You need to give it up because God needs to hear you cry out. And you cannot cry out as a prideful man when you cannot bend your knee. Just like Malcolm X was told to bend his knee. There was so much pride there, he couldn't bend his knee. And when he finally lost the pride, he was able to bend his knee and to kneel down and pray before Allah. He was able to give his life to something greater than himself. We find great men who do great things. But there are very few and few great men on this earth today. But we keep hearing about Hitler being so great. Hitler was so great. He was great in his convictions, but not in his endeavor to kill off people. But nevertheless, we, bought, we have to find men with a mission and one that is willing to die for what they believe. But at the same time, one who is willing to become like a little child and to accept things like a little child and humble themselves like a little child. Because we have so much going on in this world with people lying on one another, character assassinating, and destroying people's character and demonizing them. We've got to be careful, black people, that we don't start demonizing our race of people just because they're black. Everywhere we go in the nation, every continent, they all want to demonize us for our skin tone. Why is it that we're hated all over the world wherever we go? Why is it that 
We are the ones that are called to prayer and we love God more than anything in the world. And we raise and lift our hands up to him in our worship. We're the best worshipers. But yet everywhere we go in the nation, in India to be exact, there's discrimination that is spilled out on us for our skin tones as if we're less than best, as if we're insignificant, as if God made a state mistake with us. The thing that we should tell those nations is if God made a mistake with us, then why in the world did he make us his chosen people? Why in the world did he let all men spring up from our lung, our loins? And why in the world did one of the oldest, the oldest figures that was found in high places was that of a DNA of a black woman? We must realize that we are despised because of our skin tone. We're hated because we are the chosen men and women of God. And we must not look at our skin tone as being bad and hating it and bleaching it. We must look at the fact that there are men that are fainting. They're fainting every day and they are not lasting up on this earth. But those that do the will of my father, those that commit themselves to God and those that are prayer warriors that break and play and pray, and that see and that pray without ceasing. Signs and wonders will follow them all the days of their life. And there are many men that could aspire to be great just by breaking their knee, falling down to something greater than themselves. No matter how high they get up, those presidents, those officials, those uh, senators, they are to be breaking every chance they get. You should see humility all around them. And then where humility lies, there lies God. And God will be in the midst of them because God inhabits our praises. And it's very vital that we should understand that instead of preaching from the Bible, we should be pre preaching about the conditions of man's heart. Man's heart, I am told, will harden over time and wax heart. And now the time has come around, man's heart is so hardened. There is no humility shown, not even in the children when they speak to the elders. They want to usurp their authority over an elder person, not understanding that there is some type of blessing that's given to those younger people for exonerating an elder. There's some type of points given to them. There's some type of adoration given to them for acknowledging that an elder is speaking to them and that they must lower their voice. But then pride comes before fall. But no matter how high, no matter how high those youngins get, they still will be looking up to the creator and that's their elders. We must find a way to acknowledge our elders and to uh, exonerate them for the work that they've given. But we're so busy thinking that once we get so many stars behind our name and outstanding accolades that we are too good to be critiqued and chastised and we don't know how to bring ourselves down off of that high. And that high can sometimes cause us to fail. And that's what a lot of great men are doing. They're failing because they have not given the credit to God and they have bow not bowed one knee and come down and said, Lord, I, I confess that you're greater than myself. I confess that it's your strength that I lean on. I confess that the heartbeat, that my heartbeat with, is Amy that you placed inside of me and that at any time you can snatch Amy out and my heart will dis will cease from beating. I thank you that you haven't killed me yet. I thank you that you spared me. I thank you that you give me my breath each morning when I rise. I thank that you, I thank you that you've given me my right mind stayed on you, my vision so that I can see. I thank you for giving me use of my hands. I thank you for giving me legs so I can stand. 
acknowledging God for these things mean that you speak in the present tense. Thank you for me having these legs and, and feet, that I will always have access to my extremities. Giving him the praise and the honor would be thanking him in advance so that you're assured of having these limbs and the use of your limbs when you most need them in your elderly time. But we cannot continue to go on to think that we've made it in life and that we're bigger than life. None of us are bigger than life. None of us will ever be bigger than life. None of us will ever know the mind of God but we can sit with God as we begin to look on the inside of ourselves. We can find God on the inside of us because he's deposited a little bit of his essence in each of us. But we must remember, no matter how high we get, we're still going to be looking up to God. And God will be somewhere in the midst of our glory, of our outstanding work. God will be there hovering over it. Because God is good and God is love. But we mustn't remember the people we see going up. We can also see those people coming down. But we can only get a promotion through advancing God. God is the only one that can get promotions and advancement. You're not getting promotion and advancement from man because they can't not promote you. So look to God when you want to do the right thing. Look to God when you want to say the right thing and lean on his understanding and not on your own. There's too many of us that have leaned on our own understanding and we become wayward and we went down the wide path, not the narrow path. Seek the low roads and the narrow path so that you always remain humble and remember where your help comes from. And remember that it's not you yourself who have gotten you there, but the Godhead that lies within in your being, the Godhead that stirs up the gift within you. Now, I want to thank every one of you for going with me on this little journey. This is a little faith walk. I thank you so much for going with me on this journey, and I hope you've gained something from it at a time when we need more bigger men to look up to. We need to be able to see a humbler man, a more loving man, and a more kind man so that no matter how high he gets up on that ladder, he still can humble himself so he won't come tumbling down. Stay tuned for our next segment, and we'll be back at you later on this week. Oh, Davo, you've been listening to Manny Harvey's Baby Sister, and this is Omi Inga's production studio. Why don't you go down below and subscribe to my channel? By subscribing, that means you're going to support me and the work that I do. If you would like to unite with me and my tribe, I would be glad to have you as a family member. We are large on live uh, Facebook. You can go over and become not only a friend, but become a subscriber. It doesn't cost you anything. And then go down below and ring that bell. That bell will let you know when I'm on the broadcast and when you can tune in to me. And leave your comments and be sure and follow the leader. We are the leader in this establishment in Facebook. We're pressing on and we're working towards getting large numbers and subscription. And our 10th anniversary will be rolling up on us for Blog Talk radio station under Oracle Divination Network. You all are invited. And we're going to have a really wing dang doodle day. And I'll be giving out uh, CDs. And I'll have callers calling in, and those callers that call in on a certain time can be chosen to get that CD. It is our stepper CD. In honor of looking at stepping and the music stepping, uh, there was a big uh, conference for stepping, and the musician asked me to give out the CDs to as many people as I could to make sure that they know about the, the annual conference for steppers, and they get together up in Miraville, Indiana, and they have a stepping convention. I'm a stepper, and I love music and dancing, and I think you should too, but you need to have the CD in order to do the stepping dances. So we're going to be giving out some stepping music to those callers that call in during May 19th for the whole month. We're going to be giving out CDs, Okay. And we definitely want you to be a part of our team. Now, in order to be on our tribe, you got to sign up 
and become a subscriber. It doesn't cost you anything. Just put your uh, email, your name, and a way of contacting you, and do make comments because, you know, I love being critiqued. So go ahead and critique me down below and tell me what you think. Am I on the mark or have I missed the mark? Am I way out there because I'm not a Christian and I'm off the track? But I don't have to be a Christian in order to have common sense and know that it is wise. A wise woman builds her house with her own hands. Now that's why I'm being wise now and using my time to talk to someone who might be alone, who might need some guidance, who might need some insight, who might need some spiritual teaching. And this is just good old spiritual teaching. I am a spiritual uh, high priest, as one would say, uh, in the Yoruba faith. I do oracle readings, and I do read auras of people. So I sense that there are a lot of people out there that are fainting and that need direction, that need some insight, and that needs a little preaching, so to speak. Uh, I used to preach quite a bit and be charismatic, but I try not to preach to you, but I try to give you as much insight as I can because there's a lot of young people that wish somebody else like an elder would have sat down and given them some insight and given them some vision so that they didn't have to stumble in a situation. They could have avoided it by virtue of hearing somebody else's mistake or getting some insight on a subject. So I want you to take this wisely and not take it uh, as resentful as if, you know, who is she to tell me about, you know, understanding about being humble. There's a lot of prideful people that are hurt and they don't know how to come off of that pride because they've been hurt so bad. You can let go of the hurt. That's somebody else's hurt. That's somebody else's commitment, not yours. The longer you hold on to it, it becomes yours and it hurts you. The person that holds on to the unforgiveness the longest is the one that is suffering, not the one that you won't forgive. Forgiveness doesn't cost you very much. And God told his son Jesus to forgive us because they know not what they do. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, I'm going to tell you to forgive your enemies because you know not what they do. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know how much teaching they've had. They may, may have been illiterate. I'm going to tell you to forgive R. Kelly because, in fact, he was an illiterate. He didn't know anything, and he couldn't proclaim any famous books that he read or uh, any famous quotes you know, that he jarred down in his diary because he wasn't writing in a diary. So I'm going to tell you to forgive him. Yes, forgive R. Kelly. That's what I said because... He knew not what he was doing. He didn't know how this activity in the bedroom was going to affect his whole demeanor, his whole life, and his family's life, and those that are close to him. This is a, it ricocheted to the point where it started affecting his family and his loved ones. His actions, his love, his love life in the bedroom actually affected his whole family. Don't you know what we do in the bedroom should not be coming out to hunt our loved ones and our family? It should not be damaging our credibility. It should not be hurting us in general. But for some reason, R. Kelly didn't sense. He didn't think that his behavior in the bedroom would affect his whole career. He didn't think that he would have to be challenged by his actions in the bedroom whether or not he could still have his ability to sing, something he loves so much. Sometimes we don't realize just the little things we do can affect our lifeline, our ability to do those things that we so freely take for granted. But I'm saying to somebody out there today to forgive our Kelly, to forgive him. Yes, because of the lack of knowledge that he had, and the wisdom to know the difference. The serenity prayer should mean to him, Lord, help me to change the things that I can't, and those things that I can't change, help me to know the wisdom between the difference. We have to choose our life situation wisely because we will have to sleep in the bed that we have 
made up for ourselves. And it's very vital that nobody wants a preacher anymore. Nobody wants somebody preaching in their ear, but they want somebody who's been through something, who can give them a word of knowledge and encouragement. R. Kelly could do just that. He would make a fine counselor someday after he's gotten the help that he needs, after he's gotten counsel and gotten some direction for his life. He would make a fine counselor and maybe do some good for somebody. But we have to remember, we as black people have got to stop condemning each other. We've got to stop character assassinating each other and going behind the bushes and throwing the rock and saying, him, him, him did it, him did it, and acting as if you weren't there, knowing that some of these ladies were there and they were committed full-heartedly and they had wrapped themselves around that relationship and they weren't going anywhere. Some of them stayed for five, 10, 15 years. Some of them are still there now. How do you answer a verdict to a group of people who say, he's molesting me, he is offending me, but I'm going to stay here? If you're going to stay there, that means that you like it, you accept it, you condole it. And we've got to get to the bottom of these assailants who have alleged uh, inappropriate activity. We got to get to where their minds were and where they're dealing with a full debt. We got to get to where the parents' minds were and why were they saying these things when they knowingly brought their children to the concert to give them over to our Cali and to receive a check. Somebody's got to look at this thing from another angle and say, we got a lot more people to interview and a lot of heads are going to roll for this and not just our Kelly. Because a lot of people were engaged in this activity. The parents especially, how dare them get on national TV and talk about everything that these girls have gone through when they clearly knew up front that R. Kelly was gathering a heron unto himself and that those were his dancers. And they knew exactly what they were putting their, the jeopardy they was putting their child up against. They knew. But yet they come back here and want to go on national TV talking about suing someone, talking about getting the damages for their daughter. Is it just the money they want or the fame? And will the court see through that, that they are not a victim, but they are actually an enabler? So we got to get more into this whole discussion about these parents and what these girls are doing. Are they going to stay with R. Kelly? If so, then leave them there. Quit calling them back home. Now, if they're calling them back home to get another paycheck and R. Kelly just doesn't have the money, then we got to blow them out the box and we got to address that. And these lawyers got to be on top of things. They can't go in there saying, oh, poor mama. Mama's been crying, looking for a daughter, looking everywhere. No, nobody's buying that. These are some hood mothers and we know how they can put on the show. And some of them are dramatizing queens and they're dramatizing back. And I hope Levi sits down reasonably and puts this case together and blow these people out the water by showing them the inadequacy in their lawyers and in the inadequacy in the way that they gathered the facts. It is so lousy and it is so out of touch with high tech. There are many ways that you can do a lie detector test and find out who's really lying. But why are we not using lie detector tests? How come we have not even called for them? We are letting these girls get up here and their word is against our callies. And no one's word is good in this situation. We have to have lie detector tests done in order to determine if these girls are rightfully telling the truth. Now, if they're still dating the man, they didn't try to get away, and you didn't see any bruises on them, and they're not held against their will, you got to drop that case. You got to let it go. Or you just got to bring the counselors in and have them evaluated because they may be mentally off balance too if they stayed for the drama and didn't try to find a way out. Now, these so-called people that are around him that are engaging in these threesomes, like his ex-wife, you need to question her more in depth and find out what was her motive and was she a helpmate to R. Kelly? Did she assist him 
and the threesome, just what part did she play? Because she's certainly not a victim. I don't see where she's a victim. She was only a victim until her child support money ran out. And we can't have it. We can't be paying everybody whose child support money runs out. We've got to know that they've had some scars and they have been subject to be a victim. If not, they can't draw any money. They can't even draw any attention. But we got to stay on Andrea because I believe she's lying. I believe a whole lot of these people are lying and they're there to bring attention to them. How do you stay in an abusive situation for 13 years without going to the authorities about your condition? How do you not go to his uh, mother? How do you not go to his family to tell him, tell them that he's abusing you? Tell them that he needs to be brought in under charges. How do you put up with this? I don't know. But I do believe she's lying. You can't be one minute for R. Kelly. Next minute you're crying boo-hoo that he's done you in and taken all the children's uh, milk money. It, it's something to this whole thing. And all of it was conspired. And this was a conspiring efforts by the mothers, by the, 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 the young ladies, and by R. Kelly. He drew it up. He decided he was going to have a hair on of girls that could dance with him, be with him. And he bought what he wanted because he had the money. But these parents knew exactly what he was doing and they shouldn't have fell for it. OK, they shouldn't have fell for it. And then we have the lawyers to come in. They clearly know that they're a member of the bar. And if there's any conflict of interest, they cannot represent these cases. And they don't think that we know it, but some of them shouldn't even be representing the cases because it's a conflict of interest. Anytime you've been assaulted and you have noted that you had to take a deferment from other cases, then why not take a deferment from this case? Because it's an effort to put you in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in an awkward position because you cannot be general. You are biased because it happened to you. And not to mention... Uh, some of the other attorneys who are taking the case who know clearly they have a felony behind their name and they've been abusive to their wives, too. So we got to really call this stuff like it is, because some things have got to come out in the open. OK, no matter how high you get, you still going to be looking up to God. And I don't care what you say. You got to answer to God. You you will be judged on a daily basis. And don't forget that. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for going with me on this little escapade. We're talking about no matter how high we get, we still have to experience circumstances and we'll still have to look up to the greater, the great I am, because he is the one that will bring us back down so we won't get so high and mighty and cannot exclude ourselves and come down. We have a lot of prideful people these days who refuse to come down and come back to themselves and humble those knees and break to their knees. I didn't say take one knee, break to your knees and go down and tell God about it. You don't even have to tell me about it. Tell God about it. I break to my knees frequently. Whenever there's something that I need to chastise myself for, I break to my knees. And I know that there's something greater than myself and someone that I must look up to. No matter how great I get, I can never be comparable to the great I am. Because he is co-creating with me, showing me how to do it. There's a mentor and mentee. I am the one in training. I am the one learning from him. So I must humble myself so he can continue to correct me and give me insight so that I won't be so quick to be boastful and proud. Now, stop being so boastful and pride, prideful. You can let somebody else uh, uh, give you astonishment and esteem you without you having to pat yourself on the back and break your arm. We must Always remember to wag our tail to tell our story, but we have to have humility in all that we do and gratitude. Gratitude is inhabited by God. As we give gratitude, he is grateful and just to give us more blessing through our ability to offer up gratitude and being grateful. Now be grateful today and don't forget 
this segment and maybe you can use it or pass it on to someone else. Have someone else come and listen to it. Bring a friend, have them listen, and then you two both ring that bell and look and see when Omi's back on and then go and subscribe. Go ahead on, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing. Go on and follow the leader. You know I'm telling the truth. These are things that you and I both can use. I already ate of my message. Have you eaten of yours? Thank you. No matter how high you get, you're going to still be looking up to God. Oh, Davo, Baba Boy to y'all.